All right, Barney. This is the boat you're going to build. It's called the Adaro. This is Keeley. I met Keeley last year in Barrow, Alaska. Keeley is a widely published photographer and a skilled craftsman. And for the past 15 years, he's been building traditional Greenland-style skin-on-frame kayaks under the company name of Seawolf. I love my job, but like a lot of people, I spend most of my working life behind the screen of a computer. And after almost 10 years behind screens, I realized recently that it's been a very long time since I actually made anything with my hands. Keeley, on the other hand, wears a polar bear tooth around his neck and killed his own trousers. And when he told me he was running a kayak building workshop in Seattle, I signed up immediately. Who better to teach me how to do something than someone who knows how to do everything? So the course is nine days long, and of course, being a photographer, I want to document the process of this thing. We're going to use the Canon EOS ATD. Uh, I'll be shooting a lot of stills, uh, showing the process, and I'll also be filming the entire video you're about to see on the ATD. The ATD is a 24 megapixel, enthusiast focused DSLR designed to satisfy the needs of stills photographers and occasional videographers who want a solid, reliable, and easy to use camera. With a fully articulating, touch sensitive rear LCD screen and dual pixel autofocus system, the ATD is just as easy to use with the mirror up as it is in conventional viewfinder shooting mode. And given that we'll be spending a week in a cramped workshop, we need a camera that can shoot from awkward angles. It has a great stills feature set, as you'd expect from a camera in this series from Canon. It also has a good solid video specification. It's full HD, 60p, 24p. So we use this camera to document the entire process and hopefully at the end of it, I will have a kayak. Uh, but if I don't, I'll have a lot of good pictures. Don't tell Keely, but I think planes are cooler than kayaks. But before we can do anything else, we need to get wood. Cedar, to be precise, from LS Cedar on Vashon Island, just a short ferry ride away from downtown Seattle. Keeley's kayaks are designed to stand up to the rigours of lengthy ocean expeditions, while still weighing less than 30 pounds. This is a huge advantage of skin-on-frame construction, compared to conventional aluminium or composite kayaks. And as Keeley explains, our requirements are very precise. Wood for boats, and especially wood for a skin on frame, has to be the very highest grade. Mm. Each piece of wood has to be pretty much perfect, without any knots, and the grain has to run straight and clear from one end of the wood to the other. Keeley is very passionate about wood. So before we left the lumber yard, I snapped a quick portrait of him, surrounded by nature's own miracle material. Morning. Over the past 15 years or so, Keeley estimates he has built around 500 kayaks. Most of the stuff we're going to do is going to be construction techniques um, from Greenland, from the Aleutian Islands, from uh, Alaska and Canada. At the same time, the hulls themselves are quite modern and they are designed to do the things that we like to do with kayaks. But he can't do it alone. He's ably assisted by Addy, his partner at Seawolf and co-tutor on this workshop. So the first thing you should do when you find your boat is check to see... Between them, Keely and Addy bow. keep an eye on all eight boats during their construction to and stop way. their builders from making too many stupid top. mistakes. You know how he's saying that you can fix any mistake? This step that we're about to do <laughs> is very difficult to fix. <laughs> how is there already sawdust in my coffee? I've been here for about half, half an hour. Oh, that was a mistake. About to make the first cut. This is the one bit of the process that you can't mess up. If this goes wrong, this is going to be a very, very, very short video, I think. Not bad. Not bad. So I made my first cut. I definitely can't back out now. So this, in a few days, will be a kayak. When I'm not fixing my own stupid mistakes, I'm taking pictures and filming videos of the kayak building process. By the end of day one, we've already done a lot. We lashed our gunnels together and formed the basic shape of our boats, and we cut deck beams which will form the structure at the top of the kayaks.
When we're not working on our kayaks, we're making paddles. Greenland paddles, to be precise, which are formed from a single plank of cedar. As my fellow builders worked on their paddles, I took the opportunity to shoot some video. Mark is the most experienced carpenter in our group, and he dresses like it. In a break between demos, I took him outside the workshop for a quick portrait with his almost completed paddle. The next major step in the construction process is measuring and cutting our bamboo ribs. This requires absolute precision because if the ribs are the wrong length, our kayaks will be the wrong shape. The part that we're all looking forward to most, though, happens tomorrow, when we'll steam and bend these lengths of bamboo into shape. One of the things I found about this camera is the auto ISO setting tends to bias towards fairly slow shutter speeds. So when you're shooting movement, as I am in here, or you're using a non-stabilized lens, as I am here, the shutter speeds the camera selects can be rather too slow. So I found myself setting a manually actually faster shutter speed threshold in auto ISO, or just using ISO manually. But auto ISO is quite handy in a space like this where the intensity of the light changes a lot from the open doorway to the back of the workshop. The other advantage of the ATD in difficult lighting is the improved dynamic range of its sensor. More dynamic range means more chance of capturing detail, from bright highlights to dark shadows and everything in between. Okay. Alright, Matt? You ready? I think so. Bend over the whole distance there. Mm -hmm. Good. 90 degrees, hold it for a second. Next side. Very nice! Hold on, Barney. One second. Yeah. Pop up a little bit. Which is good. Perfect. Excellent. Nice job, All right. Barney. Thanks. Good, man. Thank you for your help. Right on, no problem. Day four passed in a blur of rasping, pegging, shimming, lashing, and frapping. And after we'd frapped until our hands were sore, we flushed. You see that? That is a shim. And we use shims when things don't fit right. My boat is 90% shims. Day four was hard, but eye-opening. The less said about it, the better. This is basically the frame. The frame is finished. And we attach the keel and the bow using this, this stitch, which is quite interesting. It's called a bird's foot stitch. It's very strong, made with artificial sinew. The only thing to do now is add the skin. The skin we're using isn't actual skin. It's ballistic nylon, so it's very tough. So what we'll do is we'll stretch the frame by stitching the back and stitching the front and then just stretch the whole thing over the frame. After five days of scraping and blistering my hands, I've come to really appreciate the smoothness of the ATD's touchscreen. So it's all getting a little bit real now because we've been looking at this wicker basket frame essentially for a couple of days. Now with the skin on, they actually look like kayaks. So after today, once we've actually stitched up the, the skin at the, the front and the back, um, we're basically looking at near final boats. This is intense. It's been four days of probably the hardest like, focused work that I can remember for years and years. So since you last checked in, we've done a lot. We laced the skin on the top and the back. And then we came through and did the waterproof stitch. So that pulls everything together and it gives the boat a lot of its final strength. Then we made the combing, which is this beautiful piece of laminated bamboo with bronze nails all the way through it holding it together. And then we attached the combing to the skin and we tensioned again when we stitched the combing to the skin. We painted this polyurethane with earth-based pigment mixed in and mine's come out a nice sort of, uh, not sure what you'd call this color, mustard probably. And then that's it, really, the structure is pretty much complete. With the kayaks virtually complete, it's time to add the finishing touches. Adding the deck lines, tying carrying handles at the bow and stern, and of course, picking a name. Before the skin went on the boat, I wrote the date and my name on the inside of the frame. I'm always going to remember it's April 2016, Washington, Seattle, Washington. But I spelled April wrong because I was tired and I spelled it as Aral. So this is the good ship Aral. Yeah, good enough. <laughs> we've spent almost 100 hours each working on our kayaks. And during that time, we've transformed them from little more than a few planks of wood to completed painted boats. 
but what we don't yet know is whether the kayaks will float. The final test is taking them out onto the water. Before we set sail, we're heading to a nearby park to get some photographs of all the completed kayaks in their many colours. The workshop is almost over, and after nine days of non-stop work, this is our first chance to really pause as a group and reflect on what we've achieved. And as everyone knows, a job isn't finished until you've posted a picture on social media. I must admit, I'm a little nervous about taking my kayak out on the water for the first time. And I know that the camera crew would love it if the final scene in this video was a shot of me sinking slowly under the waters of Lake Union. Ah. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> this is fun. At the beginning of this process, I said that hopefully, even if I didn't have a finished kayak, I would at least come away from the experience with a lot of photographs. And after nine long, exhausting days, I'm proud to say I ended up with both. And as well as a kayak, I made some great new friends too. It's a unique feeling of achievement, a, uh, a different kind of achievement. It's really amazing actually. I mean, we, we literally put every single piece of this together and if anyone got ahead, they just helped someone else. And if anyone got behind, someone else came and helped them. Now we're gonna go on a little paddle up to South Lake Union. So we're gonna traverse the lake and come back and then we all go our separate ways. I'm a kayak person now, that's how I live. Now, back to work. For DP Review, I'm Barney Britton.